I was listening to one of my favorite podcasts lately the other day. One of my favorite love to hate podcasts because Chris Black, one of the co-hosts of How Long Gone, is one of the most insufferable people I've ever had the pleasure of kind of uh, crossing paths with on the interwebs. He's definitely somebody that kind of will grind your gears and annoy you and definitely remind you of all the excessively trying to call to be cool guys from your local scene, the people who are, you know, clearly over the hill but still trying to remain somewhat relevant the people have some of the worst hot takes in the world but again it's compelling viewing i think that's what you need in most podcasts but if it's a duo you need somebody that most of the fans like who is um what's his name um dem jeans jason you need someone like him and you also you need someone like chris black who's basically somebody that a lot of people love to hate for it to be a really good compelling podcast and of course the other thing also is that they have great guests they really go out of their way to get really great guests they do a bit of a cheat thing with their guests as well where they get a lot of people as guests who are prominent media figures or personalities within their little scenes whether they're writers scenesters sub stackers and stuff and you know on top of artists they also get um, i have to really recommend one of the best interviews they've got on here which is really surprising as an interview with Fabio Foreign. Yes, I like I kid you not, Fabio Foreign might have one of the better interviews he's ever had um on How Long Gone. It probably helped that they're two kind of dorky white guys in his eyes. And of course in their eyes he's this exotic black man who comes from a dangerous part of town. So definitely it was a really cool kind of uh, balance to kind of hear them speak. So I definitely recommend you check that out if you haven't already. How long gone definitely one of my favorite podcasts. And they had an interview recently with Sophia Prantera who is the founder co-founder i guess of, of um, uh, aries and she had a really good interview talking about the kind of you know uh, the start of the brand and what they're doing and whatnot and one thing that was really interesting as she was talking was that number one aries is due to open a store in soho very soon which is really interesting because i don't know part of me thinks you know it makes sense because the brand is growing and i think clearly a brand like aries probably needs to have a store to tell their overall story so you can maybe be immersed into their world and kind of get an idea of their inspirations and their visions and their vibes and their whatever it may be cool but the other side of things i don't necessarily think they sell enough product to justify having an actual store from my inkling of just looking from the outside looking in the other thing that I really kind of didn't really understand with the Aries in general, I think she mentioned it a bit in the interview, um, Sophia Pantera, she was like, oh, um, she hires a lot of her sons or, you know, son's friends to kind of model people associated within that group. And I think he's, her son is like 19 or something. So I guess anyone between the ages of like 18 and 25 gets to model the Aries. And I've always wondered why they do that, considering how expensive the items are. Like, why do they persist with having really young looking guys and kids wear their garments? Kind of reminded me a little bit of like when um, Alessandro Michele was at Gucci. I've, I feel like a lot of the, maybe the Gucci clothes were really, kind of um how do you call them they were really whimsical and really kitschy looking so those kind of clothes immediately no matter what your age they're always going to kind of age you they're always going to make you look 20 years older just because of how kind of grown up and kitschy and off kilter they look but i feel like when it comes to aries the clothes quality or look of it never really matches the price and i'm looking at here right looking at this kind of you know this aussie jean jacket and aussie lily jean pants the jacket is 425 the pants are 295 all over print featuring what pieces of newspaper um you know sweatshirts for 295 hats for 55 it never really made any sense cardigans for 250 to have the kids wearing this stuff that generally i don't think look like they could afford it or maybe they could if they have kind of rich parents and then also having it at such a high price point it would make more sense to maybe have our older clientele modeling your clothes so that it would maybe i don't know look a better maybe kind of be a little bit more congruent to the price ranging maybe but maybe that's the whole point maybe when you have a brand you're meant to make people kind of wonder lust so you may be meant to make them kind of desire to be young again when they see these really rosy cheeked um bushy tailed you know bright-eyed kids modeling the clothes it maybe makes them think of uh you know the times and they when they were young and doing cool and interesting things but i don't know i feel like they probably need a little bit of a shift there and again especially if they go to open the retail store it'll be really interesting to see them and how they interpret it or it'll be interesting to see who actually goes to the store from just a point of view me it'll be interesting to see who's actually there on a daily basis um, shopping and buying this stuff because I don't necessarily see this out and about too tough. And when I do see Aries out and about, 
the most thing I see people wearing is a no problemo shirt, no problemo sweatshirt, no problemo t-shirt and cap and stuff, which is, you know, a little bit lame and a little bit corny to wear, but still that's done real wonders for their brand going forward. And I don't know, I just don't feel like there is a lot of kind of link there, but let's just see what happens when they do develop and do end up going forward with it. Um, one thing that I did really like about Aries, I think is definitely an underrated hit. Um, maybe I'm hoping it sold a lot for them and did well. Is this collaboration they did with um, how do you pronounce that? Zuzu. Um, it's a, a X O U X O U, and they did this phone case that is really cool looking. Especially considering that I'm going to get an upgrade on my iPhone very soon. I'm definitely got my eye on this kind of phone case they've got. And if you're not watching it, it's essentially a phone case that is um, constructed around a piece of rope, a carbiner, and a fake kind of like cuban link chain i guess looking wise reading from the description it says as follows aries and xou xou um snake print iphone case with a durable recyclable plastic shell soft smooth to the touch with gold aries temple onto the front um comes with a gold carabiner chunky gold chain and rope that can be easily combined to customize different lengths designed to be worn multiple ways and if you've seen the pictures or i'm just going to describe it to you essentially you're able to wear your phone like a bag like a side pouch which is pretty cool you can wear it like a necklace around your neck if you need be or whatever it may be uh, the chain i probably wouldn't wear because it's definitely going to turn my my neck green but I do like the one picture where I think the girl's got the chain kind of hanging off. Yeah, this one. This is probably the picture, the way that I'd probably go with when I wear mine. She's basically got the carbine and the rope um, on either end of the phone and the chain hanging off of it. So you can basically have it, you know, kind of like strapped across you, which is quite nice. Especially when you consider, you know, if you're able, if you're going to get a phone like I am, which is an iPhone well, I'm getting like a 14 Pro Max or something. And those things are massive. So, you know, maybe the jeans I wear might be a little bit too big and whatnot. Or maybe stuff like this is pretty cool too. You can have it like a little bit of a side um, wallet chain looking type of vibe. But I do like this kind of side pouch thing going on. But again, this has probably been the most interesting thing that I've seen them done. I've seen them do. Definitely something that kind of caught my eye and kind of piqued my interest. But, you know, it's a collaboration. It's probably something that they probably didn't spend that much time doing. I'm not sure how much of it is selling considering the price range. I think it's like 95, 100 quid. Not sure people are spending 100 quid on a phone case. Um, maybe you can clowner it if you want. But yeah, I'm a big fan. Oh, it's 98 actually, not even 95. It's 98. How much is the same price for all the ranges? Yeah, it's cool. So if I wanted to get that, that would be sold in that way. So I'm a big fan of that. But I don't know. It was just to hear her talk about the brand and its future and stuff and like i said i'm really curious to see what they do with this store because i don't know from being in london and being around i don't feel like i see a lot of aries around town anymore i feel like when i did see it often i'll see a lot of people that i would consider to be influencers people that i would consider to be quote unquote cool who probably maybe got it seeded who maybe got it at a discount maybe bought it at you know whatever else maybe little deals here and there but i didn't really see a lot of actual punters going in and buying full head to toe aries looks despite some of their stuff being really good but i just feel like it's in a weird position because is it street is it kind of elevated street where is it really an elevated like in some regards, I look at Aries and I think to myself, is it just like a really, like, is it like the Central St. Martin's version of Sporty and Rich? Or is, you know, or is it um, the flipping second reincarnation of Adam Kemmel or something? Do you know what I mean? Like, what is it? Is it a legit runway brand? Or is it kind of a brand that's kind of doing cut and sew and streetwear? I'm not really too sure because a lot of the stuff is kind of all over the place in terms of what they put out there. Like this top here that we're looking at on screen, it's a No Problemo sweatshirt. It looks like the No Problemo has been bedazzled or embroidered, I'm not really too sure. But the jumper, you know, shape itself is really well done. Like clearly this is not a, you know, stock piece. This is something that definitely kind of cut and sewed and built for themselves in their own pattern. It's got a nice little um, ruffle type, not ruffle, what do you call that? Um, it's got a little pinch on the shoulder here so it makes the shoulders look a bit exaggerated the body's a bit shorter um, the waistband here looks a little bit more thicker that they had to kind of get that specially done obviously the tie-dye print is really impressive but the shape of the sweatshirt is really nice and really well put but is that sweatshirt you know should it be valued and priced at 495 500 however it's gonna be i'm not really too sure it's something that you i mean and then you scroll down and then you see all the kind of merchy aries no problemo stuff 
and it kind of immediately cheapens whatever you see up there above so maybe the messaging is just a bit all over the place for me um and then you see stuff like this like this like i'm scrolling down and there's this really amazing tracksuit look with a i think it's basically like a it looks like a a down tracksuit essentially you've got if it looks like they're like a vest on top of a bomber jacket a vest on top of a jacket and then you've got some pants that go with it and you've got their kind of what you'd call their codes of aries which is always this kind of tie-dye acid wash type of print thing going on there which is always pretty cool and um, this is perfectly definitely my favorite bit that they've got here these jeans these combats that are kind of over uh, is it called is it called over dye i'm not sure what that process is called but it looks really really nice these kind of remind me a lot of those kind of hot girl ig combats a lot of the you know girls online be wearing with their heels and whatnot but i like the shape of those and the denim shoot is always really nice with the hood on it so yeah it's a bit all over the place for me personally so i'm interested to see what happens and that's a fucking sick look there um with the aries bomber and a mohair jumper it looks like and some nice i don't know if they're camo trousers or whatnot but they're really cool looking but i'm interested to see what happens going forward with their store um of course they probably need the store like i said to tell their overall story well maybe have some bits and pieces there like merch like music um magazines loads of other paraphernalia furniture um even the smell whatever all that stuff will be interested to see going forward and how it evolves and kind of progresses but i don't know i feel like it's all over the place i see so many different inspirations with different pieces and you see the merch stuff it feels a little bit lame feels a little bit whatever but hopefully it kind of progresses but it was nice to hear her speak about the brand you don't really hear these people speak too often about what they do so that was pretty cool to check out so definitely haven't checked out before please do how long gone episode number 422 featuring oh no it's not 422 it must be higher than that i think they numbered it wrong it should be episode number 444 featuring yeah no sorry it should be episode number 442 not 422 for episode number 422 but it's actually this is 422 that should be should be number 442 Featuring Sophia Pantera, um, one and a half of, or I guess she's the main founder. I'm not sure if uh, Galicious is still involved. I'm not sure what the deal is there, but definitely check it out if you haven't already. If you need some insight on Airy, 